Funny thing about mentors is sometimes you have them and you don't even realize they're mentors. Um, one person who was a mentor was, was actually um, the publisher of a small magazine that I used to work at. And while she, she wasn't really like in the digital space, she was in the print space from an entrepreneur's perspective, like she was a great mentor. Like I really got to work with her very closely and saw her dedication. And at the time she would keep me up to like midnight working on the latest issue and it would really get on my nerves. But later after, you know, I became a, like, I really understood kind of where she was coming from. But I've had other mentors um, at jobs, like when I used to work um, at Interactive Corp, which is IEC. Um, they're like a huge internet kind of conglomerate. I had several mentors there who worked in the industry and really um, helped guide my career and helped me realize, you know, I'm not just a designer, I'm really a product person. So I like building a product. I don't just like doing the design. I don't just like doing the code. I also like the marketing part of it. Like I really am a product person. So people like that help me, you know, really realize that. Also I've had like several close friends that are also entrepreneurs that really made me realize and feel comfortable with being an entrepreneur because in a lot of social circles being an entrepreneur is not something that's really accepted. You know, it's kind of looked down upon, like you don't have a job or you're just playing around or you're not serious. And for me, it was important to have that support system so that um, I could be validated, you know what I mean, a little bit. And I went, it wouldn't be so scary and I could actually feel like and believe that I could really make a difference and, and change an industry or, or change, you know, how people use a certain type of product divide up this mentorship question into three stages of my life and the first stage is just putting myself in the valley. Um, I grew up in Maryland on the East Coast and I had the option going to college of a, a pretty much a full scholarship to the University of Maryland or going to Stanford making my parents pay a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And my mom said go to Stanford. Going to Stanford was probably the best decision of my life um, because it put me in a place where I could actually like she said before reach your potential and so at Stanford is where I met my second set of mentors, which is my goofy friends. And my goofy friends were friends that took the same classes as me. Um, they were men, but they, you know, sucked at physics just like I do. They played the sports that I played. Um, we had the same, you know, sort of consternations about grades and, and where we going to go in life and stuff like that. And um, we took sort of slightly divergent paths going out of school. They were a little bit older than I was, but they started their own company. And they did it when the bust just happened. I graduated slightly after the bust. And they did it when there was no funding around, when there was sort of the startup sort of aura was very dead. Um, like Marissa, I also was lucky enough to be a section leader, and my class size went from 15 to like 4. So the sort of like glamour of computer science was not really there anymore, and they did it, and they were successful, and they got funded by a really good VC. And so I'm sitting here in my cube thinking, that was awesome. Like, I would love to do that myself. And so I was so ready to quit my job um, to do something startup-y. And it was them showing me the way that it was possible that made it possible for me to do that. Um, I think otherwise I would have been like, oh my gosh, Larry and Sergey, they're geniuses. And you know, they started Google and it's so awesome. You know, I, there's no way I could compare to that. Um, and they made it possible for me to compare myself to them. And um, now I think the, one of my greatest mentors is my co-founder, Seth, who's a, who's a guy. Um, but what he does is he's slightly unself-aware of how good he is sometimes at selling himself, but not in a boastful or arrogant way, but he's just very natural in the way he presents himself and his ideals and how he represents our company. And I learn a lot from watching. And I had to say, when we first started, you know, maybe when we go to a networking event, I would just sort of tag along. I'd stick right next to him and sort of follow everything that he did because he was not afraid to go out there and talk to people, and I was scared. I was terrified. Um, and six years later, um, I leave them at the door and I do my own thing. Um, I think that's, you know, that's, it's, you find people, like, you know, people said here, at, at all shapes and sizes, whether they're men or women, but they're people who believe in you and, and you can learn from. And I think the learning part is, is extremely important because it opens doors that you may not have even seen exist for yourself. Um, and once they're open, it's like, whoa, you know, I can do that, which is very, very empowering. My mentors have been few and far between, but they have been women, they've been men, um, and they've been in very different places. Uh, the first was uh, uh, from MIT, the outside reader on my dissertation. Uh, she was a labor economist by training. Um, and she's, she actually is the one who told me, 
yes, you should take that Lotus job. Uh, and she said, there are only two companies in the US I could imagine you working for. Um, and Lotus is one of them, so give it a try. Uh, but her message was the same as the message of, I have a best friend that I've been friends with for 50 years. Um, and that's a kind of advice and support. And somebody who, whenever I can't quite figure out, should I do this, should I not do this, how do I feel about myself, reminds me who I am and what really matters to me. And I think all of us need to find, be lucky enough to find somebody like that who we go back to. Because while you talk about sort of different faces you wear at work, I think those of us who get to define our own path realize the freedom of not having to check yourself at the door every day. And when we do studies at the level playing field of corporate leavers, of why people leave, um, big tech companies, other big companies, it is the degree to which they feel they can't be themselves. And women are more likely to feel that than men. Underrepresented people of color are even much more likely to feel that. Gays and lesbians who feel like they can't be out are likely to feel that way. So I think figuring out what the toll it takes on us to check ourselves at the door and then to think about how we can mentor young people about they are who they are and let's find, help them find a good fit um, because that's where they will be most successful.